Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Mark LeMay. Today I'm going to talk to you about digestion and how your digestion really works. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the scale up here. I drew what is my interpretation of what your uh, digestive system looks like. This is not drawn to scale, so this is a very simple model. But first of all, when you take a look at, here's the mouth up here, going all the way down into the stomach. This is the duodenum and the ileum and jejunum, which is your small intestines, and all the way out to the colon and out. So starting at the mouth up here, the pH of your mouth is somewhere between four and five. The word pH means hydrogen potential. That's how everybody remembers in chemistry is seven is considered to be water. That's basic as far as like neutral. Then you have one to six is acidic and above seven to 14 is considered alkaline. So that's like a base. So what happens is your mouth is between the pH of four and five. So when you eat something and it goes down into your stomach here, the stomach is an acid organ. It should be highly acidic and its pH is typically right around between one and three. That is highly acidic to be able to break down food. That's what it's supposed to be like. When I hear people saying, it's like, you know, I'm, my stomach is really too acidic and stuff like that. It's like, well, that's a good thing. You're supposed to have an acidic stomach. That's to break down the proteins, the fats, and the carbohydrates that you put in it. Because what happens is, and this is normal digestion, what happens is when you eat something, as soon as it hits your stomach, the pH goes up, whatever food you put in there. So, but it should stay between a one and a three. So then what happens is, is after about an hour, let's say if you took like the most common thing people eat is like, like say hamburger, okay? So you eat a hamburger, it comes down to your stomach and within one hour, your body should be able to break that hamburger down into a broth in one hour. So then what happens is, is then it goes from here down into the duodenum. Now, if it's at a one to three pH and it comes down into your small intestines, it's gonna burn it. So your body has what's called the liver gallbladder, which is for fat digestion, it produces bile acids, and your pancreas. Your pancreas produces uh, bicarbonate. So that's to help also, and it also has pancreatic enzymes to break down your foods. So what happens is you have a little chemical sensors right here where the sphincter of OD comes together from the, the liver gallbladder and your pancreas. And so it's got this chemical sensor, and as soon as that chyme from your stomach drops down into the pancreas, it opens up and squirts out the bile acids and also the pancreatic enzymes to neutralize that chyme so it doesn't burn the duodenum. So it should lower it down to like a four or five pH. So it's still acidic, but it's not real acidic and it doesn't burn. Plus when you mix all of these together, it helps the digestion of your foods too. So then when it goes through the duodenum and down into the ileum and jejunum, which is this is the other part of the small intestine, the pH goes to about a 6.5 to about a 7.5, a little bit above what water is. As it goes all the way through down into the colon, by the time it leaves the, the rectum, it's between about a 5.5 and a 7, which is water. So I, I'm sure everybody here has eaten something kind of spicy like jalapeno peppers or something like that. And then you have a bowel movement, it's like, ooh, that kind of burns. <laughs> that's that's this coming out. It's a little bit more on the acidic side. You want your small intestines to stay acidic, okay? If it goes more on the base side like that, it messes up your intestinal tract. It causes what's called dysbiosis, which causes irritable bowel, Crohn's disease. I mean, all these different things, your leaky gut. That's what happens when it goes more on that side. So here's what happens to most people when they come to me and they're talking about having poor digestion. So let's say as you get older, your pH is in between a one and a three, it starts raising up and it starts to get more like a four to five, okay? And you put food in your stomach, instead of it basically digesting within an hour, it's now taking like two hours, three hours, four hours to digest. And again, you have sphincters at the top, which is called the cardiac sphincter and the bottom of the stomach, which is the pyloric sphincter, and it holds that in there. And if it's like, if you take something and you drop it down into your stomach and it's in a milder acid, a protein will putrefy. A carbohydrate will basically start to ferment and create gas. And, and fats will turn into like, it's like they rancify, it goes rancid on you. So all of this starts sloshing around in your stomach and it creates its own organic acids 
which again, if they're in there for four, five, six, seven hours, they see some getting longer, that will start to cause problems with the sphincter. They'll open up. So that's why when people are laying down at night, which is where we typically hear this, they lay down at night and that sphincter opens up and you get acid reflux. It's not because your stomach is too acidic. It's not acidic enough to break it down. That's why you get these esophageal reflux. And that also, if it's going along, it's either gonna go up or it's gonna go down. So if you get this mass that is now like between four, five, or six pH, and it drops down in here, this chemical sensor right here, if it says, hey, it's, not a f it's higher than a four or a five, it's gonna let it go by without squirting out any bile acids or any pancreatic enzymes to, to neutralize it more because it's already neutralized. It's, it's higher than what it's supposed to be. So it goes into your small intestines undigested and less pancreatic enzymes and bile acids in there to help break it down. So now you get this big mass of goo coming in here and it's undigested. And so it goes into the small intestines and it just causes havoc because you have bacteria throughout the entire intestinal tract, both small and large intestines. And if you have this undigested food, bacteria loves it. Okay, that's why you get more people having problems with gassiness, bloating, uh, you know, constipation, diarrhea, because it's also irritating to it too. So you can get, again, irritation causes diarrhea. <laughs> And if it keeps going through here and it's undigested, it can cause constipation. So as you can see, when people add Tums, that's again increasing your pH, which is not good, it's bad. Okay, it makes you feel better temporarily, but it doesn't help you to digest your food. Or you take like Prilosec, which is like the number one antacid out there, it shuts off your digestion totally. So now if you're like a six or a seven and you throw food in there, what's it gonna do? Nothing. It's just going to slosh around there and go through there. And again, you're going to have problems. So if, if you're having problems with your digestion, please give me a call. Or better yet, go to our website. Go to LeMayChiropracticAndWellness.com and give us a call. We'll be happy to help you out with your digestion. This is one of those things that is fun to, to help people get back on track. So I hope that was helpful for, for you. And we'll talk to you soon. I'm Dr. Marshall May.